Hi friends and welcome. We've got a real special treat coming your way. It's something that, well, it's gonna require a little bit of explaining. First of all, just so you know, we don't normally get involved in fundraisers and those kind of things. It's not because they're not worthy of our time. They certainly are. The simple reason is we get so many requests, we'd have to say no to so many people. How do you choose? Well, that being said, we are following up on one today and that makes it pretty special and how we got there is even more special. It's a family thing. If you know me, you know I'm kind of a homer. I'm a family guy, a hometown boy, and that's how we came to be here. There were so many people in the Wilderness Journal family that were involved in this effort that we just had to do our part. It started out very tragically when a young man lost his life in a boating accident in our town Fortunately, if there can be a fortunate thing happening in such a tragedy, his daughter did survive. Well, this gentleman happened to be a fishing buddy and a regular friend of Brandon and Jason up at Trigger Time, so they very graciously and generously threw in together to put on a fundraiser so they could do whatever they could for the family to help them through this difficult time. Well, during that fundraiser, one of the very generous donations was made by Jerry McQuestion out at McQuestion's Deer Ranch, and believe it or not, another family member, the Morgans over at Morgans Composting, bought that hunt. Well, to bring it full circle, Sue Morgan, if you're a frequent flyer, you might recall she went down to Texas with us to kind of work her way back into the hunting scene after having some real trauma of her own. Well, she's actually agreed to come out and do that hunt if yours truly comes along. So, I'm your host, Kyle Randall. This is my Wilderness Journal. And we're bringing the family together to support a deserving cause and to follow up on a personal triumph right now. I caught up to our host Jerry McQuestion out at his Rack Attack Ranch a little bit early, so he very graciously gave me the nickel tour. This is a large, very diverse place to hunt, lots of rolling hills and nice cover. And after showing me all around and where we'd be setting up, we got back to the cabin just in time to greet Sue and Justin, and not long after JJ and his parents got there, this was gonna be truly a family hunt. We all took a few minutes to catch up, and then we started to pull our gear together. It was decided that JJ would hunt with his folks, Jeremy and Missy, along with Grandpa Brad, and Sue would hunt with Jerry, Justin, and myself in a different stand. This is a big place, there's plenty of room, but we needed to get out there and get to it. The deer would be moving before long. Once in the blind and settled down a little, I did notice that Sue seemed just a little nervous still. She confided in me that it was nice to have her son Justin along, but she hadn't hunted since we were in Texas last spring, and the thought of shooting a rifle still made her a little bit queasy. Friends, if you don't know, Sue was involved in a convenience store shooting a couple of years ago, and to this day, just the sound of gunfire was very unnerving. She truly had to battle back just to get to where she was today. Our trip to Texas was the first step in that effort, and it was both my pleasure and my honor to be asked to come along and help her continue on that journey, that healing process, so she could again enjoy the out of doors with the rest of her family. And we sat there talking deer hunting, at least whispering it, until the first few deer started working their way out into the fields. In just about every direction over the next half hour, Sue saw does and fawns moving out to feed. There was a large group of them working some acorns under a big oak tree off to our west. There were plenty of deer starting to move, but so far we hadn't seen any antlers, no bucks to speak of.
there were deer moving in every direction now and even though we hadn't seen any big bucks yet it was so enjoyable to be sitting there on a cool breezy afternoon in the early fall this is as enjoyable as the outdoors gets and to just sit there and watch in every direction as the woods comes alive well this is as much a part of hunting as anything in my opinion and I was pretty certain Sue was enjoying it just as much as the rest of us. If you've never been to McQuestion's Rack Attack Ranch, it is a big place. It's got a lot of open fields and food plots as well as thick cover. And where we were sitting, the deer were already moving. We hadn't been there 15, 20 minutes. We hadn't seen any shooters yet, but over at JJ's stand, well, let's just say the deer were moving over there too. JJ and his dad, Jeremy, and his mom, Missy, were all staring at the first few deer that had worked their way down to a pond in front of their stand. deer were moving everywhere out in front of them as well and to be honest with you that's what it takes especially for young people having something to pay attention to watching makes it much easier to stay quiet to not become distracted JJ was watching several does when they noticed there there was a buck and a dandy buck up on the hillside eating acorns They watched as this buck fed for a while and then slowly worked his way out into the feed field. This was an awesome older buck, but it only had seven points, something that would concern some people. But I promise you, it wouldn't bother JJ in the least. JJ and Jeremy had decided he wouldn't shoot over 100 yards and the buck was closing the distance. He walked the width of the field, in fact, right out in front of J.J. Unfortunately, he never did come in any closer. J.J. got to see a great buck, but he'd have to wait for another day to take a run at one. J.J. had been close. That big seven point would have been a perfect deer for him to try to harvest. Unfortunately, it just hadn't come close enough. One of the things you have to do when you're working with young people is manage their shot distance. It's important for them to be successful, and in order to be successful, you want to give them every opportunity to make a quick, clean harvest. JJ just have to wait for a few days. And speaking of waiting, while we were waiting over at Sue's blind, well, let's just say there were more than deer showing up. Is there any big ones down there? No. No. I guess I had to wonder what Sue considered a big one, because here were not one, but two huge bull elk working their way up through the field. Jerry told us he has just a couple of these big bulls wandering around. Sue? 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 <laughs> not a deer, Sue. <laughs> That's not a deer. And I have to tell you, even though we were doing a deer hunt, these were some amazing critters to look at. Can't shoot them, you don't want to see. It's in the deer family, not a deer. Pretty elk, huh? Nice elk. Yeah. Would you like to have one of those? Oh, yeah. I've got your, no. I've got no. Brad's <laughs> phone number. I'm sure I do. Yeah. They eat good. Yeah. I just shot an elk. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> you want me to be happy, right, honey? <laughs> Justin and I both told Sue, don't worry about it. We'll just call Brad and tell him we've switched gears and now we're elk hunting. Yeah. Fortunately for all of us, though, the elk did turn and work their way back up through the timber. We weren't going to have to test Sue's resolve. And now yeah, we could get back to deer hunting.
about a half hour later, Sue was sitting watching a pretty nice six point work his way down one of the green fields. He was just picking his way along and we sat there watching until another buck, a little bit nicer buck. This one actually had a third main beam, an extra big long point on his right side. He was working his way out at the top of the field. The older deer were finally starting to move, finally starting to come out and feed. Now all Sue needed was for one, the one she wanted, to work its way down close enough for a shot. And maybe, just maybe, we'd get this done before darkness closed us out. When it was obvious that both of these bucks were working their way more or less in our direction, I whispered to Sue, I asked her, were one of these bucks a deer she was interested in? And she didn't really answer me. She just kept looking around at some of the other deer that were coming out in the field. So I took that to mean, yeah, she wasn't quite ready. She really hadn't made up her mind, at least not yet. Sue was seeing some nice younger bucks, but unfortunately we just hadn't seen that older deer, that shooter yet. It was beginning to look like both her and JJ were going to have to come back and give it another try. In fact, I was already thinking about schedules and when we could get back up here when I heard Justin whisper, look at that. Out to the right of the blind came a gorgeous buck with more points than I could count. He was working his way in way off to the right side. This was certainly an exciting buck to see, and you could tell by Sue's behavior, she was definitely interested. Unfortunately, he was so far to our right, Sue was going to have to get up and cross the blind, try to get a window open just to get in position to try a shot. No simple feat when you've got this many deer all around you. All we could do was carefully, slowly bide our time, ease over there, and hope we didn't spook them. How you doing, girl? You okay? Somehow or other, we managed to get that dance done without spooking this buck. Now all Sue needed to do was get up on the deer, get in the rifle, and get a decent shot. Just find him. Okay. How you feel about shooting it? And then, just as she got into the scope, he started moving. He started working his way back to our left, back to where Sue had been, actually. Okay. And then he took off trotting up across the field. <laughs> now Sue was going to have to move again. And by the time she got repositioned, ready to shoot again, the buck had joined a group of does and fawns all the way up across the field over 150 yards out. Certainly not too far for this rifle, but I wasn't all that certain about Sue's nerve. Can you find him out there, Susie? Well, I don't know. Yeah. It's giving me a good shot. Yeah, that's a very good shot if you're comfortable with it. This would be the longest shot she'd ever taken. Mm -hmm. He's angling in a little bit. So let's just wait. Let me... If she took it. Does he want to shoot this one? Tell me you might get comfortable. Go ahead and take it off. Okay, reach up and rock your safety off. Honey. Okay. If you're ready, Donnie, you stand in there. Can you see? Mm-hmm. All right. Just... You kicked him. Kicked him.
You yeah. watch him. You nice watch shot. him. He cowboy kick, girl. Yeah, nice shot, Mom. Good job, girlfriend. Turn around here. <laughs> no. Nice shot. Good shot. You want to throw Good that job. back on safe yep. for us, Justin? Thank you. I saw him kick oh, up. Yeah. He ain't gonna go He's gonna pile up. Nice job. <laughs> mm, nice job. Great shot. Thank you. Oh yeah. Well, that's a. Yeah, a what about that buck? No, I like this one. I didn't know much she wanted this one until this one came out. <laughs> you feel pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sue had made an awesome shot, and even though she was still a little bit worried because the buck ran off a little bit, I'd seen it in the camera. I wasn't worried a bit. That buck wasn't going nowhere. Justin helped Sue follow up the sign, but as predicted, this buck hadn't even made it out of the field. Well, you go up there and touch him. I don't think he's going anywhere, though. As we are oft times fond of Thank saying, you. he ain't just taking a nap. <laughs> I think that's a done deal. Yep. Nice job. <laughs> what do you think? It's a nice one. Yeah, I guess. You, you want to hand that rifle no. off to Justin and get a hold of that or no? <laughs> yep. Yeah? That okay? No, I think hey, gun bearer? I think it's a 15 <laughs> pointer. She, she grew her own gun bearer. How do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> How many people do that? <laughs> All right. Let's uh. 15. Well, count those little ones? Oh, yeah. yeah. What about that? Oh, yeah. yeah. What about that little one out front there on the on the buck's right side? It might be 16. Okay. Look, way out on the end there. Yeah. You count that? We're hunters. We count everything. Trust me. If, if this was the buck pool over at Morgan's, <laughs> you'd be counting that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, there, young lady. <laughs> that is quite an end to quite a, quite a hunt. Yeah. Nice. What, nice. What do you think? I like it. You like it? I like the deer. <laughs> Do you? How'd you like the hunt? It was good. Yeah. Better. And what about? Better. You're getting better at this. Uh -huh. Scarily better at this. Yeah. <laughs> to the point where I'm not going to offend you any. <laughs> what? Uh, it's quite a place, isn't it? Yes, it's a very nice. Yeah, place. Jerry was uh, very generous, and and uh, you were kind of the benefactor of some of that, and certainly the family that that everybody had got together and helped were certainly. I don't know how you can make something like that better, but any little thing to help, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and I think you get that as well as most. Yeah, it was really nice. So I wanna thank Jerry, and I really enjoyed it. It really was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And you're it getting was. better? I'm getting better. Yeah, I told you, it's not gonna be a minute. This is gonna take <laughs> a while, but you know, you were a lot more composed this time than in Texas. Yes. And I, and I look forward to the next time, although I, I gotta warn you two things. First of all, I think Justin's starting to covet your Christmas present. That deer rifle in him just went south. <laughs> and and there's one other thing. You keep calling me up to go hunting, and my wife, she's a jealous woman. <laughs> that Indian's going to lift my hair. She can go with us. We, oh, well, I, there you are. Well, Tina, hear that? We'll yeah. all go together. We gotta Congratulations. You did a wonderful job. Thank you. No, thank you. I really appreciate it. Sue had her prize, and this was an awesome deer. And I should tell you that the very next night she came back with grandson JJ and he too shot a tremendous buck up there. After a couple of hours of watching some younger deer moving around, Dad Jeremy noticed a big old buck way at the top of the field. And after watching him feed up there for better than 20 minutes, the guys finally saw that he was working his way down, coming closer to JJ. This was obviously a big old buck, a mature deer. Jeremy and Brad were doing all they could to coach and to help JJ, to calm him, to walk him through the steps.
But just like everybody else, sooner or later, it was on JJ. It was his finger on the trigger, his first deer hunt. <laughs> JJ had made an awesome shot on a tremendous buck. I frankly don't know how he's ever going to top it. Grandma and grandson had both done a great hunt, and it was for a great cause this whole thing got started. I have to tell you, friends, it doesn't always work this way. And like I said in the beginning, we don't do the fundraiser thing, but this was an awesome way for us to do our part to help facilitate the circle that is family. The way we support each other in the Wilderness Journal family is undeniable. And I have to tell you that all of you help make that possible. It's all of us caring about each other that make outdoor families so very strong. And I absolutely hope that each and every one of you have a chance to go out this harvest season to share some time with your family, be it grandma, grandpa, 8, 18, or 80. Everybody can enjoy the out of doors just like we did on that trip. And I truly hope you get the chance to do that. And who knows, you just might see us back out there doing it. And if you do, well, you know we're going to stop and share a cup and a fire. And if you don't see us out there, friends, well, then we'll be right back here so we can share another adventure from my Wilderness Journal.